What's up guys, it's Project, and I thought it would be really helpful to make a giant tips video to maybe enlighten some on cool tricks to do in world, or perhaps help people in obtaining certain things, among other explanations, considering the game is very complex and not everything is explained properly. It goes without saying, there is some light spoiler things, but nothing too major. So without further ado, let's begin. If you plan to use a melee weapon but occasionally dabble in ranged weapons, dump all your ammo or coatings from your inventory into your storage box before going on a quest each time. The blue box for quests will always get you free ammo, so this is an easy way to build up ammo stock for free without having to waste money buying stuff or gathering materials for special ammos. You can also create item loadouts to where you have no ammo, that way you can quickly dump ammo you got from blue boxes so you can get more ammo for the next quest. We all know a quest suck, try using the ghillie mantle to pretty much bypass any aggro. Then simply wait for your ghillie to recharge, then get the other egg. Bingo! Easy egg quest for easy canteen upgrades. Most charms can be upgraded to level 2 or level 3, so don't forget, your critical eye charm could be a critical eye plus 3 charm instead of a plus 1 for a huge boost for your endgame builds. Take quests within an expedition. This is just plain faster to do quests since the quest loads instantly. So if you're farming, definitely go with this way. Likewise for co-op, don't disband, instead stay with the party and return to camp, then just talk to the handler to start the next quest which everyone else can join quickly. Don't forget to report back to the ecological research chief every now and then, as this will update your research levels and scout fight level to make finding a monster less of a pain. To gain research points, simply kill monsters and collect their tracks constantly. Get enough research points and your monster guide would also update, allowing you to see monsters weak spots and even what parts they drop and what's needed to break to drop them. The more stars next to the weapon icons or element names means the more effective that element or damage type is to the monster. This is amazingly handy so definitely make use of it. You can access the notes anywhere from going to the options and then hunter's notes. Sharpness color increases damage. The lowest you want to be hitting is in yellow, which is a 0% multiplier to raw. However, blue sharpness gets you a 20% increase to raw damage, while white sharpness gets you a whopping 32%. Blue and white also increase elemental damage, blue giving 6% roughly, while white giving 12% roughly. So definitely factor in these multipliers when picking what weapon to make. Harvest Honey Honey is used for mega potions, which is the best thing to be created since sliced bread. Also, carry some honey and potions with you on a quest. If you run out of mega potions, you can use the radio wheel system to select and craft mega potions then and there. Also, potions suck, so just use them to create mega potions. Harvest Flash Bugs Wyverns like Rathalos are super annoying when they fly for melee weapon users, so harvesting flash bugs makes easy flash pods, which makes any flying creature less annoying, but also allows you to get in some serious damage on the weak spots. Speaking of weak spots, damage numbers have two colors, white and orange. You almost never want to be hitting with white numbers popping up, switch to a different part if you can that has orange numbers pop up instead, as you'll do more damage. There is some exceptions to this like Anjanaf where its weak spot is his head and is hard to reach a lot of the times, but do the best you can to do the most optimal damage. The skill Weakness Exploit is perhaps the best skill in the game to get as soon as possible. At level 2, it makes nearly all negative affinity weapons positive and makes 0% affinity weapons have 30% affinity instead. At level 3, it gives you 50% affinity when you hit weak spots, aka orange damage numbers popping up when you hit. Affinity is crit chance and depending on whether it's positive or negative, you gain a damage increase or decrease of 25% roughly. So example, with a 10% affinity weapon, if you crit, your raw damage will be increased by 25%. But if you have a negative 30% affinity weapon, if you crit, you lose 25% raw damage. So if it's negative, you lose damage. If it's positive, you gain damage upon critting. Negative affinity weapons usually have higher stats than others, however, so work out the math to see if they're worth it. A good amount of the time, they are for the slower weapons. The fastest way to get weakness exploit is low rank Rathalos chest piece, which gives you level 1 so it's definitely a must-have for damage. Later on in high rank, you'll eventually see weapons with an element, but it being grayed out. These elements are not in effect and are only unlocked via the free element skill, 
which can be first gotten from Zora Magdra's armor or even a charm. This will unlock the element and make some of its damage usable. At level 3 for the element skill, you'll gain the full damage of the element. These weapons tend to have better stats than a similar element weapon, but you have to use free element skill to take advantage of it. In high rank, multi-monster battles skyrocket. As in, even though Rathalos is your target, up to two other monsters could drop in the area you're in, so unless you constantly want Candy Corn Man bombing your hunt, definitely bring Dung Pods. Using them on a monster will make them flee if they trigger. It might take some, but most of the time you simply need one or two. Or of course, if you enjoy the chaos, just let them fight. When you reach Hunter rank 50, you'll need to find Tempered Elder Dragon Tracks in order to unlock the best quests that give the best rewards, Tempered Elder Dragon Quest. These are what most are going to be farming for, getting stones to augment weapons or armor for the months ahead for min-maxing builds. The best way I found to do so is equipping this setup here, Hunter Headgear A for Scoutfly Range and Scholar. Scholar increases the speed of getting investigations. I'll also eat for this skill here, as it helps a ton in getting investigations fast, though it's not always available. But if you see it, make sure to use a voucher so you have a guaranteed chance of the skill activating. So this setup in general is best for getting tempered quests. But essentially, you just go on expeditions and find Elder Dragon Tracks, to which Tio and Kushala are the most common in these locations. Thanks to Fightin' Cowboy for making a video pointing those out. Remember to use Gilly Mantle to avoid aggro, but this is essentially how you can get investigations for Tempered Elders. Which quests you get are random, though you only need to do this early on as when doing Tempered Elder quests, you can just pick up tracks within the quest to get more investigations. Once you get a Tempered Val Hazak and defeat it, you should unlock an optional quest from the Army Girl, giving Tempered Val and Clifford, which then you can use this quest as an unlimited supply for tracks for Tempered Elder Dragon investigations. Always capture, specifically in high rank. You not only gain more investigation points for tempered monsters and rewards in general, but it's also necessary to unlocking special arena quests needed to get full completion of each star rank, aka red complete. If you see a silvery blue complete, that means you're missing quests that you have not completed yet in that rank, which only pop up by unlocking them through NPC quests or from capturing specific monsters within that star rank. This is important as some misconception of needing to only capture monsters once was spread around, it's not that way. You need to capture every monster once within that specific rank. So just because he caught a low rank Raytheon, doesn't mean you'll get a special arena quest for the high rank one. You need to capture a high rank one in order to unlock the special high rank arena quest for it, and vice versa for some monsters. So you need to capture some monsters twice, but if you capture every monster twice, once in low rank and once in high rank, you should be good to go. Completing all 7 star and under optional quests, capturing all monsters in the way I just mentioned, getting all palico gadgets, beating the final assigned quest which is Tempered Kirin, and getting maxed out research level on 15 or so monsters, finally unlocks a special arena quest which if you beat it, you unlock the coveted Rainbow Armor Pigment. And yes, that is a lot of requirements, but it's something to work towards for the months ahead. After beating Zora Magdros, you'll unlock an optional quest called Redefining the Power Couple, which is a high rank Raytheon and Rathalos quest. Clearing it unlocks perhaps the best money maker in the game, the Bandit Mantle. When equipped, occasionally after attacks, you'll drop materials that glow yellow in color, which are special trade-in items you can sell. Large scales go for 1k, Beautiful goes for 2, and Lustrious go for 3. So with enough hunts with it on, you can rack up a ton of cash in the farming process to help aid in forging or upgrading gear. Special Slinger ammo like Piercing Pods or Blast Pods stun monsters. This is useful when a monster is trying to flee the area, you can stop them by simply hitting them with a pod, so save your pods in these moments rather than flinging them at monsters as soon as you get them. You get these pods usually by just hitting a monster as they'll sometimes drop out of them during a hunt. Bright Moss ammo can blind flying monsters and make them fall to the ground if you hit them in the face when they're flying. Make sure to grab insects called Wiggly Liches in maps as they act like a free dash juice, which is especially handy for dual blades and bow where stamina is wasted for attacks. Here's the location for the easiest access one in each map.
attacking corpses is a good way to build up file energy for Charge Blade, getting free stages for Longsword, and getting sword energy for Switch Axe. The flip side is, watch out when attacking while corpses are on the ground as they'll eat through your sharpness. Don't forget to claim your awards from the beta or other miscellaneous stuff from your house cat. While in your house, the storage box there will also be the place where you can change to a cosmetic skin via change appearance and then layered armor settings. You can also change your armor's pigment color once you unlock high rank armor. After you get hit by a big attack that makes you fall where you lay down, not touching any buttons or analogs will leave you on the ground for a short while. This is key as you're immune when this happens. So if you got hit and think a monster would do a follow up hit, simply stay on the ground until things are safe to get back up. When you beat Zora Magdros for the first time, you unlock the power and armor charm from the merchant in town, which you can buy. They're pretty expensive, but provide permanent stat boosts so long as you keep them in your inventory, so definitely worth buying. Once you access high rank, a certain new monster's body parts can be combined with the charms to boost them. The benefit is you can then buy an additional power and armor charm, and both effects will stack. Just remember, you have to keep these in your inventory at all times, so I recommend making a loadout with them, that way if you want to clear your inventory, you can simply swap to the loadout for easy and fast storage of any gathering stuff you got. There's a special palico gadget called the Plunderer, which actually gives you extra monster parts after a hunt. This is by far the best gadget to get as soon as possible, since more parts equals less farming. And if you increase its proficiency enough, your palico will make material shinies drop more from monsters as well. To obtain this, you have to have Area 13 and Rotten Vale unlocked. Then enter an expedition with raw meat in your inventory, then search around that area. If you're lucky, a Grimalkin will show up and then run away. Once you chase it to this area, simply leave some meat on the ground by pressing square. Then go back and hide a bit. It'll call its friends and once they start cheering, you can go up to them and trigger some dialogue in which you get the plunder gadget. Don't attack your party members once you've killed a monster while they're carving. You'll trip them, disabling them from carving. So don't be an asshole. Why we can even be tripped still during this, during the end hunt 60 seconds, is baffling. If you're immune to damage, you should be immune to trips. Hopefully they patch this so trolls can't get away with it. As the only reason to kill a monster is to carve them, so they shouldn't let trolls prevent you from earning your hard work's reward. If you're finding it a common problem, Carving Pro from Hornetar Waste prevents knockback when carving in a single piece. Alternatively, just capture the monster. And lastly, there is no best weapon. Stop asking. <laughs> the best weapon is the weapon you're most comfortable with or willing to sit down and fully learn. There might be best types of that weapon for certain elements or files or raw, but there's no the best as far as what weapon to use. All weapons are viable and capable of killing fast, the best quote unquote, comes with your skill with the weapon and understanding of the monsters you're fighting. But that is it for my ultimate tip video. Ultimate tip video. Ultimate. Hopefully some of these helped you guys out in having an easier or smoother experience in world. Of course, I can't cover every little detail in this game, so make sure to leave your own tips you found useful down in the comments. It would be nice to have a collective place of useful tips people can come to when they need help. Likewise, ask any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. If you want to know some advanced combos for weapons, make sure to check out my weapon guides for world, it'll be in the end screen annotation or on my main channel page. But thank you for your time, if you found the video useful, make sure to leave a like, and if you haven't, subscribe and hit that notification bell afterwards for more. <laughs>